Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an algebraic expression. We're given that x plus 1 over x is equal to 3, and we are supposed to evaluate 3x squared divided by x to the fourth power minus x squared plus 1. All right, I'll be presenting two methods. Uh, let's start with the first one. For my first method, I'm going to use a direct approach and find what x is. So let's go ahead and notice that x does not equal 0, so I can go ahead and multiply both sides by x. That's going to give me the following. And then we can put everything on the same side and solve this quadratic. Right? Using the quadratic formula, we get the following values. x equals negative b, 3 plus minus square root of b squared, which is 9, minus 4 times ac, which is 4. So this gives us the following values for x, 3 plus minus root 5 over 2. Now, if you dealt with uh, golden ratio, this expression should be familiar to you. But anyways, that's another story. So we got two x values because it's quadratic and the solutions are different. What are we going to do with those? Well, we're supposed to evaluate this expression, right? That algebraic expression. So we can go ahead and substitute the x values. So we're supposed to evaluate... 3x squared divided by x to the fourth power minus x squared plus 1. But which x value are we going to use? That's the million dollar question, right? And the answer is it shouldn't matter. Otherwise, we're going to get two different answers for this problem. It should depend on the value of x, right? So suppose we go with the negative. x equals 3 minus root 5 over 2. A lot of times I use the positive, so this time I'm just going to pick on the negative. So what happens if you replace x with that? Let's go ahead and evaluate x squared and x to the fourth power separately so that we can just directly plug it in. How about that? So let's go ahead and find x squared first. I want to square the numerator. That's 9 plus 5 minus 6 root 5. Yes, that's how I usually square uh, differences. Uh, and then divide it by 4. This is going to be a 14. So we can go ahead and divide by 2. 14 minus 6 root 5. If you divide everything by 2, you're going to get 7 minus 3 root 5 over 2. So when you square something that has a square root of 5 in it, any power of that number is always going to have square root of 5 in it. So they're going to belong to a certain class. Anyways, that's x squared. And then what about the x to the fourth? It's just going to be x squared squared, right? So we can go ahead and square x squared. That is going to give us 49 plus 9 times 5, which is 45, minus 7 times 3 times 2 times root 5, which is going to be 42 root 5. And again, that's going to be divided by 4. Because every time we square the 2 at the bottom. 49 plus 45 is equal to what? It should equal 94, right? I think. 94 minus 42 root 5 over 4. And as you can see here, everything is divisible by 2, not by 4, by the way. We can go out and do that. So half of 94 is 47 minus 21 root 5 over 2. So that's going to be the value of x to the fourth power. Now I'm ready to plug those into my expression. Let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to go ahead and replace x squared with 7 minus 3 root 5 over 2. And then at the bottom, I have x to the fourth, which can be written as 47 minus 21 root 5 over 2 minus x squared, which is 7 minus 3 root 5 over 2. And then plus 1, which I can write as 2 over 2, so that we have a common denominator. And guess what? We can totally forget about the denominators because both the top and the bottom have the same denominator, so we can flip and multiply and cancel out the 2s. Okay, so let's go ahead and distribute the 3. That's going to give me 21 minus 9 root 5, and that is going to be divided by the bottom. That's going to be 47 minus 7, which is going to be 40, but then I'll have a 2, so that's going to become a 42. Let's go ahead and write that. And then I have the minus 21 root 5, minus 3 root 5, and that is going to give me, oh, and there's a minus sign, obviously. I have to take care of that as well, of course. Now, forget, negative 21 plus 3, that is going to give me negative 18 root 5. And the 2 is canceled out, so we're all good. Now, what does this tell you? Do you want to rationalize the denominator, or do you want to do something else? Well, I just noticed that 42 and 18 have a common factor, which happens to be... 2, so I can take out a 2 here, and guess what? When I do, I get something super duper nice, because 
I get the same thing, right? So we can go ahead and just cancel out the 21 minus 905. We end up with one in the numerator, so the answer becomes one half. Wow, that was easy. Well, not that easy. It was a little brute forcey, but that's what the first method is all about. So we plugged it in, we found the value of x. Now, what happens if you use three plus root five over two? You can go ahead and test it for yourself, but the answer should be the same. If not, let me know in the comment section. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the second method. Now, let me rewrite the question. We have x plus one over x equals three, and we're supposed to evaluate three x squared divided by x to the fourth minus x squared plus one. So this is what we're trying to evaluate. Okay, so I'm thinking the answer is one half, so that's kind of nice, but I noticed that I do see the x squared and x squared squared at the bottom. So this kind of tells me, and for these problems, this should be pretty standard. If you've done problems like this before, I mean, I think you should think about it. I can definitely take out an x squared. And I know that x does not equal zero. We know that, right? I mean, we all know that, hopefully. x does not equal zero. So why not divide both the top and the bottom by x squared? And it makes sense. You'll see in a little bit that it simplifies this expression a great deal. So when I divide the numerator by x squared, I end up with a 3, which is nice. When I divide the x to the 4, so if I wanted to show my work, obviously, hopefully I'm not skipping too many steps here, this is what it would look like. I know some people like, sometimes they'll say, hey, you're going too, way too fast, and I, I realize I do. But anyways, let me go ahead and show my work. Divide everything by x squared, and this is going to give you a 3, which is nice. This is going to give you a 1, which is also really nice. So we get the following, 3 over, and this is going to give you what? When you divide powers, you're going to subtract the exponents, right? So you're going to get x squared from there, minus 1 plus 1 over x squared. And you're like, so what? Okay, you just did something, but it doesn't make sense at all. Well, it actually does, and it should, because remember, we're given x plus 1 over x. And our expression here kind of looks like it. Well, it's just the sum of squares instead of x and 1 over x. So it can be dealt with. How? Well, we can write it this way. First of all, I can go ahead and write my expression like this. And then just focusing on x squared plus 1 over x squared is going to give me the answer. How? Let me show you how. Since we know that x plus 1 over x is equal to 3, that's, it's given in the problem, right? We can go ahead and square both sides. And that's going to give us the following. x squared plus 1 over x squared. Yes, I do the a squared plus b squared first, which is nice. And then plus 2ab, which is 2, equals 9. And guess what? We got the value of x squared plus 1 over x squared. Beautiful. That's going to give us 7. But I can go ahead and plug it in here, right? Because I know now that this is equal to 7. And no matter what the x value is, it's not going to matter. It's always going to be the same value. So I'm going to replace x squared plus 1 over x squared with 7. 7 minus 1 is 6. 3 over 6 is equal to 1 half. Thank you very much. Case closed. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.